Hello, welcome to Autodesk NetFab Simulation Lesson 2, Generating PRM Files. The objective of this lesson is to show you how to enter machine process parameters such as power, scan speed, layer thickness, etc. into NetFab Simulation. The lesson also covers how to select a material from our material database and then how to, how to combine those process parameters with the chosen material in order to generate a PRM file. Now in Lesson 1 of the tutorial series, I explained in detail the modeling approach used by NetFab Simulation, but I'm just going to give a quick overview here so that you can understand what a PRM file is and why it's important in the analysis. So you might remember from Lesson 1 that in order to simulate any part level analysis in NetFab Simulation, you first need a PRM file. You calculate a PRM file by inputting your machine process parameters and your material properties into NetFab Simulation and applying the moving heat source to that material on a small scale analysis. So this material here is just a millimeter by a millimeter. And we're going to build that up a few layers. And what we get out of this and what we store in the PRM file is an understanding of how this particular material will mechanically respond to a particular machine parameter setting. Once we understand how the material responds to the machine parameters, we can map that information onto a full geometry. So with a small scale was just a millimeter by a millimeter, this is about 240 millimeters along this dimension. And this allows us to see how a full part is actually going to mechanical respond, mechanically respond to these parameter settings. So now what we want to do is launch the simulation utility and go into our process parameter library. Now notice the library comes filled with some PRM files that actually get shipped with the software. There's one for each material in the database, and they were created just using generic made-up machine parameters. But for this tutorial, we actually want to enter in our own custom machine parameters, which we can do by hitting New. Now we'll be prompted to enter in our machine parameters. We'll choose 150 watts for the laser power at 40% laser absorption efficiency. We'll have a laser beam diameter of 150 microns, or 0.15 millimeters a travel speed of 600 millimeters per second on 40 micron thick layers, a hatch spacing of 140 microns, a recoder time of 10 seconds. Now what the recoder time is, is it's the amount of time that it takes your recoder blade to rake over a new layer of powder and return to its starting position. And the inner, rotation, inner layer rotation angle will be set as 67 degrees. The material we'll choose from the database is Inconel 718, and now we can hit OK. We will be prompted to select a directory to run the analysis in. I'll just stay in my working directory. And we will name the PRM file. You may want to give this a descriptive name so that you remember what material you ran it with and what parameter setting. So this will be our PRM file for Inconel 718 at 150 watts and 40 microns. Now when we hit OK, we'll be alerted that our solve has started. Now this solve for the detailed analysis uh, goes slower than what you are going to be accustomed to for the part level analyses. And that's because the detailed analysis is more uh, has more computational expense associated with it. So this is going to be about a two hour analysis. So I'm not going to actually wait around for this analysis to complete. But once it does complete, you will notice that your process parameter library will populate with a PRM file given the name Inconel 718 at 150 watts and 40 microns. So just to summarize what we covered here, uh, we went through how we onboard machine parameters into NetFab Simulation, how to select a material from the database, and how to use those parameters and that material to generate a PRM file. The next lesson is going to instruct you on how to use that PRM file that we generated in this lesson to actually run a full part level analysis.